Well done, Craig. Okay. So there's the female. You can see her a little bit better now. So yeah, you can see she really doesn't care. So yeah, so I was just saying about the mane, and they did this really interesting study where they had um, males with long and dark, uh, long and short manes, and dark and golden manes, and they actually found that the females were going for the long, dark manes, because generally speaking, the longer manes are going to be on the males that are older, it's going to be uh, stronger as well, and very well fed, so sort of very fit really. So that's kind of a sign for them that hopefully that male who's going to father their offspring is going to pass on very good genes so that their offspring will hopefully go on and survive. So they were picking these males that had the darker manes over the golden maned lions. Now I don't know if there was actually a difference in fitness between the golden and the dark dark main lines. But it seemed to be that's if they had the choice, that's what they were going for. So there are another two vehicles in the sighting, so if we go and try and move, we're gonna disturb their sighting. So I think we're going to stay here f for now, rather than trying to go and see the mail. Oh, sorry, I missed the first part of that question. Uh, could you repeat that? I missed that. So Mr. Rudy, welcome on board, wondering what determines the colour of the manes. And I'm not entirely sure, it will, it will be genetics. Um, and usually the, the golden haired males found more in cr the Kruger area than the dark mailed, um, dark mane males uh, from further north. But I'll have to try and dig that paper out. It's a long time ago since I've read that, and I'll, I'll see if they talked about what actually did determine it, and if there was any the genes that determined it. But certainly the dark colour will be the melanin, as we've spoken about earlier on today. In the giraffe's tongue, it'll be the same same uh, pigmentation. It's just the blacks. So wherever you see black on animals, it's that's what's causing the colour. So the black on the back of the ears on the lion, the tip of the tail and of course you do get the different colour variants of animals that lack that pigmentation. So you get the white lions, they're not actually albino, albino there's no colour at all so there's no pigmentation so that's why you get to see the pink nose, the pink ears and the pink eyes because they have absolutely no pigmentation whatsoever. Uh, on, on species that are pure albino, but with the white lions, they have brown on the back of the ears, they have the, the brown tip to the tail, and obviously they have uh, different coloured eyes as well. So they often have blue eyes, but I have seen white lions with yellow eyes as well, so they do have some pigmentation, so it's actually known as leucism rather than albino. Very much so, Tess. They're so regal, even though they're sleeping. They really are. And 
term the king of the jungle, although obviously we're in the bush here. So I'm wondering if that term actually came from the lines from India, because then they would be in the jungle over in India. So the Asian lion is different, a different species to the African lion that you're seeing here. And there's only about 300 left in the world. And that's in the Gaia forest in India. But the African lion is not doing so well itself either. Unfortunately, uh, they're actually found in pockets now. Whereas before, they would be over the whole of the country or many areas of the country. But now they're becoming isolated into small pockets and these populations can't go between the pockets so they're actually not able to keep the genes nice and varied which is what's really important to help animals fend off diseases and things like that. So the more variety of genes you have, uh, if a disease comes along it might attack animals with or without certain genes and others those will survive go on to breed and they have this immune to that disease if you have a very limited variation in the genes it might be that they don't have that gene to become immune and they'll actually have the disease and it can wipe out the whole population and unfortunately that's what's happened with cheetah because they went through what's called a bottleneck and they went down to very low numbers and the genetic variation within the cheetah is very very small so they're very susceptible to diseases unfortunately so that keeps the numbers relatively low as well you just get disease that wipes out a population that's it so what they're trying to do is actually have corridors to allow the movement of lions and certainly up where South Africa meets uh, Botswana uh, they're actually trying to keep a corridor open between uh, the three different populations that are in that top corner and uh, I think it's Sam is it Sam Zimbabwe it's Zimbabwe Botswana and South Africa there's the three populations there and as I say they're trying to actually keep those corridors open to keep the gene flowing because that's they've actually found that's a really important population to keep that variety of genes up there so it's really important work that they're doing up there Now, I was kind of hoping with it being a breeding pair we might get some movement, but as I say, she's very much happy to chill out at this stage, but if she's ready to mate, she will let the male know, and he'll be there like a shot. Yeah, Nancy definitely out for the count. But as I say, it could just turn, it just could change in an instant. If she just gives... The male the word that she's ready.